I'm gonna show you the, just the mechanics um, of using, of getting the mix Forteo into uh, a new kind of reservoir um, for an old, dumb insulin pump. So this is an old Medtronic pump. Uh, it's actually old new. It was brand new in the box when I bought it from the dude off Craigslist. Um, and it has its own little reservoir. You can see how much is in there. Mine is almost out. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to refill it. Um, and it's not totally intuitive because <clears throat> it, the it's set up really well if you're using insulin. Um, everything, in fact, is sized to fit insulin vials, but sterile saline and Forteo, those are different sizes. So, get the reservoir. Get open up the reservoir. There's a couple parts to it. See this top part? There's a needle in there. That's the needle that's supposed to twist onto the top of an insulin vial. The sterile saline vial, different size, won't work. Tried it, been there, done that. Tried to hack it, make it look bigger, it just doesn't work. Um, but this needle is great because it allows air to flow back and forth. So you can open up this. You can't do it without introducing some way to let air escape. So let's start from the way I said, this is your reservoir. I'm gonna open it up a bit so that there's room to put Forteo in. Now, this needle has served its purpose. We're gonna detach it, twist it, take it off, because it doesn't fit anything we need. And we're gonna use regular old insulin syringe. Take the guard off, take the pen cover off, and put some air in there, okay? Why are we doing this? Because we're gonna do what we did with the other kind uh, with the Omnipod. We're gonna take Forteo mixed with sterile saline out of here and we're gonna put it into here. So get some air in here, upside down. Oh, whoops, don't forget alcohol, alcohol wipes. I'm gonna keep everything, this stuff is gonna go in your body. Wipe the top. Very important, have, have clean hands. Now, use this, and it's upside down. Remember, we've got some air in here. And stick it in, push the air in, and I'm gonna draw out, in this case, I'm gonna actually draw out a full syringe where I'm gonna draw out 30 units. And I don't have any bubbles, it's pretty good. And then I'm going to take my thing here, my um, reservoir, and this little septum in there, you can see it. This I'm gonna stick into the septum now that we've made room for stuff. I'm gonna stick it in. I don't know if I can do this. I have to do it really on camera. Stick it in, okay? Turn it the other way, upside down. I'm gonna squirt in the Forteo. See that? The Forteo. Now because I've got about 30, it's 30 units from this. I'm gonna get this again. I'm gonna twist it back on and I'm gonna push up. So I'm just basically at the, the end there, see that? But not so much that there's stuff squirting out. Now, I probably need a little bit more than 30. So I'm gonna take this off again get my syringe, put some air in there, get my sterile saline, my Forteo, stick it in there. I'm gonna pull out some more. I think I'm gonna pull out 15 this time. So I'll have a total of 45 units. I'm gonna stick it in here through the septum. And because it's a vacuum, it should Oops, push it in. 
See, it's pushing down the septum. Whoops, it's pushing down the septum. So it's pretty full, that's good. It's full for us. This is like nothing for insulin people. They filled all the way to the end. We're not using that much. All right, so that's pretty full for what I'm, my purpose is. I'm gonna dispose of this sharps like a good girl patient. And now I'm going to get an infusion set. I'll be right back. Doki, back with an infusion set. This is a Mio uh, with the shortest um, amount of tubing, 18 inches. Uh, I know that most um, diabetics want as long as possible so they can stick it anywhere. I'm only sticking it on my stomach. I want it as short as possible so it's not getting caught on anything. So I'm gonna open up this little package, plastic off. And there's all sorts of neato things in here. I'm gonna pry open the top. And inside is the, the thing that we're gonna stick onto our reservoir. So I'm gonna, you have to unwind it, unhook it, and unwind it. There you go. So now I'm gonna stick this. See, it's also got a little needle in there. I'm gonna stick this into the top here. Just twists on, it fits. So there you go, twist it on. Now, this bottom part can come out. So this is kind of ingenious. You twist this. Ta-da, all done. And then this goes into this. So I'm gonna take the old one out now. I have to tell the thing that I'm gonna take it out. So I had suspended it, so now I'm resuming it. Now I'm going to find a menu. I'm gonna go down to reservoir and set. Now this is all stuff you'll find in the manual and online. Uh, so I'm going to do reservoir setup. It says disconnect the tubing from my body, which I already did. Remove the reservoir from the pump. So let's do all that stuff. Off camera, I guess, because I can only put this in one place and I so I'm going to remove the reservoir. This is the old one with the tubing. It goes in sharps. And it says press act to rewind. So the little stopper in there is going to rewind all the way back. You can hear it. <sighs> this thing is pretty cool. I was super impressed with the biomechanical engineering of the Omnipod, um, but really the simplicity of, of the good old regular insulin pumps, the, the design really has not changed in like 20 years. Oh, rewinding, rewind complete. Buzzing. Please place and lock the reservoir in pump and then press act. So that's our cue to take the reservoir. I'm gonna stick it in this end. And it just slides in and twists. And it and it stops. There's you can't it's it's idiot proof. You, you can't overturn it or anything. It's just in there. So now we're gonna it wanted us to press act. So I'll press act. It says to fill the tubing. It asks, are you disconnected? Yes. So now I press act to fill the tubing. Now what I'm gonna do is, up here is, I'm gonna show you, hopefully you can see, that there's gonna be drops that come out of here. So I'm gonna press this until some drops come out. It says check for drops. I don't see any drops, do you? I still don't see any drops. Seems 
open up. There's drop two, three, four, five. Okay, six. All right, great. So we saw drops. Yay. It's filled. And it says press escape when done. Press escape. Do you see drops? Yes. Connect the set to your body. Well, that I really didn't want to do on camera. Okay, well, now I have it attached to me. And it's pumping. Now it's gonna show that there's, it looks like, oh no, there's not a lot right there. It's like, it's almost tiny. That's because there, for our purposes, that's like three, four days worth of Forteo. It works great. Um, you don't need more than that, really, truly. Uh, the rest is just uh, wasted, which it was on the Omnipod. So let me talk about the advantages of this over the Omnipod. There's a few issues with the Omnipod. One is it's great at set it and forget it. You fill it, set it, forget it. It takes a minimum of 85 units to fill it. And at the dose I'm on of Forteo, I don't even get through half of that. So it's wasting a lot of Forteo. Two, that Omnipod sitting on your 98.6 degree body for three days and Forteo is temperature sensitive. So my experience was that um, the longer it was on my body, the more I'd have to interact with my PDM and turn up and give myself boluses and, and increase my basal rate because it was less and less effective as time went on. And by the end of the third day, I was like spending way too much time worrying about it. Um, so that was not good. So how do I solve those issues? Well, if the pump doesn't live on the body directly, then it won't get as hot. Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, what if we could cool the pump and not have it live on the body? But that's even better. So you're maintaining the potency. That's great. What if we wouldn't have to waste so much Forteo just priming the actual pump? That'd be awesome. So I went on to Reddit, you know, the place where everybody wants to find out everything and people actually tell you how to do it. Uh, and I went on to the diabetes pump boards because those are the people who've been pumping for more than 20 years and they know the ins and outs of every single uh, pump. And it turns out old dumb pumps because right, all I need this pump to do is pump, have basal rate, have a low basal rate, have the least amount of medicine to prime it, short infusion set, and the ability to turn off all of the fancy bells and whistles. Um, now all of the just commercially available current pumps are fancy pants. They talk with Bluetooth and RF to uh, glucose meters, wireless glucose meters into your phone, into PDMs and stuff. We don't need that. Really, truly don't need that. All the stuff you really need is actually on this itself. So you don't need anything separate. Um, so I asked, you know, what pump would fulfill these requirements on Reddit, and I got some fantastic feedback. And the general consensus was a an older model, you know, easily picked up used Medtronic uh, five series. So a 510, a 512, 523, one of those things. And it turns out those are very, very popular use without upgraded software or firmware because uh, all the diabetics now, the cool thing to do is loop, is to um, hack your old pump so that it talks to a different wireless sensor and um, acts as an artificial pan pancreas. It's, it's a huge thing. Uh, it's very, very cool. If I was diabetic, I would totally be hacking and doing it. But it means that what you think would be an old, used, dumb pump, which would be not what everybody wanted, wouldn't be in demand, is totally in demand. What isn't in demand is an old, dumb pump with upgraded firmware. 
So that means on the diabetes secondary market, uh, I could get for cheap, in this case, I got a brand new uh, 523, Medtronic 523, um, because it had upgraded firmware. Nobody else wanted it but me, baby. It was great. Uh, you know, I saw people paying $1,500 for older models that didn't have upgraded firmware. I got a slightly newer model than those and had upgraded firmware, which I don't care about. Um, it was great. It was a great deal. And it turns out the dude who sold it to me in New Jersey on Craigslist, um, he's like, you know what? Now that I don't have the pump, I don't need all the infusion sets and everything on infusion sets and reservoirs and stuff. So he just, he just, he's like, do you want me to send them to you? I was like, yeah, how much do you want for them? He's like, I don't, I just want them out of my house. So he just sent them to me, um, which is the a savings of like hundreds of dollars for me. So this is, it was a great deal for me. Um, Anyway, back to solving the issues. So I found what pump would be great. Um, a 5XX model Medtronic used pump, upgraded or not upgraded firmware. Um, then how do I, oh, that, that's already gonna be living off, off of my body, like not stuck to it, you know, stuck like my Omnipod was. Um, so people get like little fanny packs and shit for that. How do I keep it cool? Hmm. Well, turns out there's a company in the Netherlands who figured it out, and it's called the Cooler, C-O-O-L apostrophe R, and it's like evaporative cooling. So this is a leather, it's a faux leather um, pad with a, a sort of pack, and it's got Velcro inside, all around the edges, over here and it also comes with this um, cool pad cooling pad and you stick it in water for at least 45 minutes and it plumps up and for the next 12 hours or so it evaporatively cools everything cool you know evaporates off of it and so whatever is next to it the sitting inside here next to it will stay cool. Now, I was warned on the Reddit boards, these things don't like water. Don't get it wet. My initial plan was like, I don't know, even to just use a, a baggie or something. And they said, no, 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 that's, we, we've all tried that. Don't do it, it doesn't work. Well, it turns out the cooler, you know, pasta VR, this is a three piece thing. It comes with a waterproof inner lining. And all these have little holes so that you can stick the infusion set through it. I mean, this doesn't need it. So this is my old one. I just had it in for 12 hours. And I've been soaking in water. Wonder one. Which is what I'm gonna stick in now. Let me get all the excess water off of it. And this is how it's gonna move in. I'm gonna get the pouch. I'm gonna stick the fresh, wet pad in. And then I'm going to get the waterproof pouch and then I'm gonna stick that inside here. And then there's Velcro all around the top. So I'm gonna Velcro it inside so it stays, nothing wet will touch my pump. Okay, so now it's ready for my pump. And my pump happens to be attached to me and I have to stick the infusion set through there. So I'm gonna tell the pump to suspend. You go to the menu, the main menu, click suspend, it goes suspend. I confirmed with the, now it's buzzing, it's going, go suspend, man. Go take it off, hurry up. So now, took it off my body. I'm gonna stick it through all the little holes. I'm sure there's a better video that somebody else did that this works on. Okay, got it through. So now I can pull the set all the way through. Put this in here, Velcro it closed. Take this and put it back on my 
hook it back into my body. Clip. And then that's cool. And what I've been doing with this is I've been sticking it in a little runner's belt that actually was made for diabetics. It's got a little hole in it too. And then stick this in here and wear it very fashionably like an 80s fanny pack because I'm bringing the 80s back. Me single-handedly. Me and my hypoparathyroidism. So this has proved fantastic. It's been about a month and I use way less, for, I waste way less Forteo. Keep it cool. I have two of these, so I'm always just rotating them. Uh, and it's, uh, one's always in water, so it's always ready. Um, and it's worked like a charm. I mean, it's really fantastic because I have a short set, a tubing set, but it hasn't caught on anything. It basically just hides under my shirt uh, in the fanny pack. And it's kept the Forte cool enough that I don't have to change my basal rate. I don't have to give myself boluses. It's pretty damn perfect. Other than the fact that I have a thing sort of hanging off me that I have to worry about. Um, but, you know, I'd worry about that with Omnipod too. So, the other thing I like about this setup, other than I feel much better. I just got my labs back. I went from an 8.1 serum calcium on the Omnipod to an 8.4. Still technically hypocalcemic, but pretty damn good for me. An 8.4 serum calcium with this setup. So I think I would like to declare this pumping, Forteo pumping ex, uh, experiment a success. Um, I don't know if NetPara is ever gonna come back. I don't know if I'll wind up pumping not pair if it ever comes back. But right now I found a decent enough substitute that, to keep me alive um, and kicking. So I hope this helps you. Um, I'm gonna provide detailed uh, account of how I came to this solution and how I achieved it and with links so that you can go make up this uh, Rube Goldberg pumping situation for yourself. But um, I'm happy to say that it, it, it's successful. For me, it works, it's great, and I'm much happier and healthier because of it. Good luck.